I'm Bill Murphy. I'm a professor of biomedical engineering and orthopedics and rehabilitation at the University of Wisconsin and co-director of the Wisconsin Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine Center. My lab develops uh, new biomaterials for a variety of purposes, but one of our main interests is in using materials to control what stem cells are exposed to. We surround stem cells with materials that have controlled properties, and the goal is to control what stem cells differentiate into, and ultimately to control their formation of new tissues. So we're interested in using stem cells like iPS cells as a feedstock to generate new tissues. Many of the studies that are looking at vascular tissue formation, blood vessel formation in a dish, have focused on using either uh, animal sources of cells or human cells that are taken from large arteries and veins. And the issue with those cell types is that they don't recreate the human microcapillary system that we're interested in studying. We want to form microscale capillary networks that are similar to the kinds of blood vessel networks that perfuse human tissues. When our vascular networks form in a dish, we start with cells that are sitting in a three-dimensional gel and effectively the gel is mostly water. The cells are capable of remodeling that gel so they can migrate around and find one another. They can organize into higher order structures. And what you see in a very limited subset of conditions that we've identified in these networks is that individual cells find one another, form into tubes, and create these junction points that are similar to what you would see in a native vascular network. So we're seeing really formation of a human vasculature in a dish. One of the things that we value in getting these differentiated cells is that they're qualified, which means that we know what we're starting with. We know that these cells are highly pure. We know that they're capable of forming vascular structures. There's less of a need in our hands to, to essentially run these cells through a full differentiation process from reprogrammed human iPS cells to endothelial cells derived from iPS cells, and there's value in that process. I think iPS cell technology changes the game entirely in terms of regenerative medicine. It helps us to start with cell types that have essentially a blank slate. Now we can generate human-derived cardiomyocytes in a dish that are patient-specific. We're moving very rapidly towards generating cardiac tissue in a dish that might even be perfused with a vascular system. And using that kind of a system essentially is, a, is consistent with the idea of using human heart tissue in a dish as a screening tool. That's likely to decrease the amount of time and cost associated with drug development, toxin screening. And then in the longer term, if we can really perfect these techniques in a dish, consistently generate tissues that have functional properties and are capable of recreating the function of a human heart, a very long-term proposition, it may be possible to generate tissues in a dish that can be transplanted. So there's a great deal of excitement and, and a different way of thinking really about regenerative medicine, the future of regenerative medicine as a patient-specific discipline.